Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate an object that you've drawn in a 2D grease pencil, animated along a path. And so I'm using, a, uh, I've just started up a new scene and I'm using uh, Blender 2.912. This is just a brand new scene. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to start to draw on this stroke, uh, just like a little paper airplane. So I'm going to use the pencil, solid stroke. Let me please increase my radius to about 30 and the strength to one. I'm not going to use the pencil. I'm going to use a straight line tool because it's a paper airplane. So uh, I'm just going to do the wing first. I'm going to click, hold and shift to draw a straight line and then return to accept. And so I'm going to start from here, click and drag right about here I'm gonna draw the side view so click and drag and then once you're done let go of the mouse and then hit return and then from here there's a the little thing right about here that comes down return and then click and drag all the way up here and return maybe I could draw a little bit of the other wing just a little tiny bit just so to give it volume and return cool there, there's our paper airplane and I drew it all in this stroke object if I go down to object mode you notice that here's the pivot point the uh, center point and so what I'd like to do is put it uh, maybe about right here because it's important where this pivot point is or the center point. I'm going to go back to edit mode, select all my strokes and then move them, move them to where I want that, that center point or the pivot point to be. Now when I go back to object mode, you'll see that the pivot point is right there. Now it might have been a little too big. So what I like to do is scale it in the edit mode. I'm going to scale it. In fact, maybe make it a little bit more beefier and then put it where I want that pivot point. Or the center point it will be right there. Go back to object mode. And next is if we're going to animate this along a path, we need a path. So we've got our object. Now we need a path. So in object mode, go to the add menu and let's add a curve. And uh, e either the Bezier curve or the path will work. I just work. I just like working with the Bezier just a little bit more. So I'm going to click on Bezier. They, the other one works also. And then I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it uh, just down here just to get it off the center. Go to edit mode, hit tab. And now I've got these vertices that I can move. I can move this vertex over and then click on this vertex and move it over. I'm going to have it go like this and then maybe down and up. And um, I need another vertex. So I'm going to extrude this vertex by hitting E and I get another vertex. I'm going to put it right here and then hit E again and then put it up here. I know that the curve is not the way I want it. So what I can do is I can move these vertices around till I get the curve that I want. Um, and then this one, I'm not going to move. I, I can move the vertex up here and then I can move the handle to get the curve that I want. I can move these handles as much as I want to get the curve that you want. So that's why I like the Bezier curve. You get, you get a little bit more control. So we've got the curve, the airplane's going to go up and then down and then up. So we've got our, we've got our, let me go back to object mode. We've got our curve, we've got our object, and now we just have to put them together. So the object I'm not going to move, I'm just going to select the object, go to object constraint properties, click on it, and we're going to add an object constraint. 
and there is one right here, follow path. Nothing happens because it doesn't know what, what path. I might have several paths on my uh, scene. We just need to choose it by clicking the eyedropper here, target. The, click on the eyedropper and then select the path. And then you'll see that it snaps to the beginning of the path. And then when, um, if you hit play, nothing happens. It's not animated yet. We have to keyframe the offset. Right now it's at zero and we have our playhead right at one, frame one, at zero. Right click right on this and insert keyframe. We've got our first keyframe. Now go to the keyframe that you want to end it by. Let's say 120, um, keyframe 120. And then make sure that this offset travels all the way to the end of the path. Um, negative 100, return. And then we are at frame 120 and we are at the end of our path with the offset. Right click on it and insert a keyframe. Now we've got two keyframes, but you don't see them. Remember, this is a grease pencil. This is a dope sheet. This is not the regular timeline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move it up a little and I'm gonna move up my, my uh, timeline up and then you'll see the two keyframes. You'll see the two keyframes right there for the offset. And uh, I am going to make my whole timeline to be 120 frames long. And then I'm going to hit play. Hit play. And then you'll see your airplane follow along that path. It's that simple. But uh, we've got one more uh, thing to check off so that the airplane follows that curve. Uh, and so it is this follow curve option. Click it on and then you'll see it go not the way you expect it because it is following along the curve, the Y axis. So you need to tell it that the forward axis is this um, X axis. So the forward axis is the X axis and the up axis is the Z axis. And now it's going to follow that curve, hit play and there it is. And that's all there is to it. There is another way uh, by parenting the object to the curve. Um, I just found out that this is a little bit better. It, it, it feels a little bit smoother and the parenting didn't work as well. And that's it. Uh, I hope that this tutorial was helpful to you. And if you liked it, make, make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you.